What's up guys, Jeff here with Craft Computing and it's finally that time. It's time to start digging into Threadripper. But first, you know how we start every episode around here. So if you've been following me for a little while, you know that about three or four weeks ago I picked up a Ryzen Threadripper 1900X CPU and an X399 motherboard. Uh, got a pretty stellar deal on this and it's really the only reason I picked these up. But uh, today we finally get to dig into this thing and start putting it together. So let's take a look what I got put together here. All right, this is gonna be a partial upgrade of my existing X99 workstation, which has gone through variations of a 12 core Xeon and a 5820K. Uh, so I'm reusing the power supply, which is an EVGA 850GQ. Uh, it's an 850 watt, 80 plus gold certified power supply. Uh, the case is, uh, I think, actually beautiful. It's an Inwin 303 in white. Um, I've got a couple of really cool things planned for this case, so uh, we'll be digging into this here pretty soon as far as specifics on this build goes. Over to the right here, we've got the Ryzen Threadripper 1900X CPU. Uh, this is the fastest of all the Ryzen CPUs as far as single-threaded performance goes. It has a base clock of 3.8 GHz with a self-turbo to 4.0. And I've heard this overclocking as high as about 4.3, so I'm, I'm really interested to dig into this one. Uh, we've got our MSI Gaming Pro Carbon AC X399 motherboard. Uh, that should be a lot of fun to work with. It's got the digital RGB headers on it. Um, and a couple other really cool features I'll dig into. Um, I picked up a quad channel kit of Dominator DDR4 Platinum. This is running at uh, 2666, 32 gigs worth. I'm gonna be reusing my EVGA GTX 1080 for the win card. Um, I think it should give Threadripper a run for its money as far as performance goes. Uh, we'll see later on if I need to upgrade to uh, the 1080 Ti or possibly even a Titan, we'll see. And then uh, my beer here. I'm also reusing the pump and res combo from my existing build, which is an XSPC 170 millimeter tall reservoir with a DDC pump on the bottom. Um, this is a solid unit. I've been more than happy with it. It's got a glass tube, the inside you can illuminate. I've got some pretty cool things planned for this as well. So uh, without further ado, let's get it all together. I just want to pause for a second here to uh, show something off to you all of you. Um, we knew Threadripper was a big processor, and I know this has been shown before. This is my first hands-on experience with uh, with Threadripper. So, so down here in the box, this is an old Pentium D. This is a 775 socket. This is a 1366 socket, so this is reminiscent of the X58 chipset. This is my 12-core Xeon uh, for the X99 platform, uh, so 2011 V3 socket. This is Threadripper. It's it's comically large. How <laughs> this thing is huge. Uh, the other thing that kind of struck me was the. Uh, and by the way, we are not going with an all-in-one cooler. This is just for so I can get it posted while I'm still waiting on some water cooling parts. But the uh, the socket mount or the uh, the cooler mount is an offset pattern. Uh, they're not symmetrical. So that that was just interesting to me. But uh, yeah, that thing is huge. All right, we're in the case. Uh, in win. Now, first off, thank you for the little bags of screws. I, I love this. I love that you do it. It gives your products an even more premium feel. I, I love your case designs. I love the build of your cases. This puts it over the top. Thank you. Uh, moving right along. Uh, in win. Interesting design on the uh, on the I/O shield in the back here. It is uh, inset from the back of the case. Uh, it made it a little bit weird to uh, to get that mounted in it. It doesn't mount in all that tight. I think once the motherboard is screwed in, it holds it just fine, but kind of an interesting design there. Uh, it's Time will tell if it uh, ends up working. Um, isn't that just a good looking rig though? Man, that's gonna look good. All right, I'm done, Move, moving along. All 
All right, another quick uh, pause here. If you are wanting to build with the Inwin 303 and you want to use an AIO, I'd look another route. I think this is going to be a great case for air cooling, and I think this is going to be a fantastic case for custom water loop. Um, unless you have some pretty flexible tubing uh, in your AIO um, and possibly slightly longer, you can get a 120 onto the back. There's a 20 mil or 120 mil fan slot on the rear here. Um, but as far as upper mount radiator, I had to mount this sideways and this upper cable is pretty well stretched a little bit further than I would like it to see. Um, so yeah, AIO is probably a no-go in the 303. And it's a vlog, so what time is it? Beer break. Ah, love my job. All right, let's keep moving. Welcome back. Uh, there's always some gotchas with custom builds like this, and I think I just hit my first one. Um, so here is the pump and reservoir that I plan on using. Um, down here, if you see those two slots right there, these are the pump mounts that are uh, integrated into this case. You can see my 1080 for the wind being the long graphics card that it is. It's covering those mounts. I cannot slot that uh, that unit right there. I'm thinking I'm gonna mount it right here, but that lends to some tubing issues that I didn't plan on uh, originally. And again, I've gotta clear this graphics card. This is gonna be a hard line build, spoiler alert. Um, so yeah, just a couple things that I gotta work out. We'll, uh, we'll see how this thing goes. So this is not the prettiest build in the world right now. Uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, this AIO that I used, you know, s stretch tubing and fans just kind of going all over the place here. Uh, overall, the board looks fantastic. The memory looks great with it. The video card looks good in there. Um, this is gonna be a water-cooled CPU with an air-cooled GPU. Um, I've got some really cool plans for this, but uh, this quick build lets me know where I need to make improvements, what challenges I'm gonna face uh before i actually get there so this was a great learning opportunity for me i'm glad the board posted i've had this thing gosh almost a month now uh, i think the longest i usually let hardware sit on my desk before i open it is about two or three days uh typically because if i want to if i need to return the item to the store i have that opportunity to do so um, in this case a month later it posts just fine so uh I know it's a long episode for uh, the payoff that you got here, but trust me, good things are coming with this. Uh, I'm really excited. I've got some great plans for this. You guys should be too. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.